Good evening everyone, welcome to an Oz Cycling Chasers update tonight, the 3rd of January 2014. My name's Chris Nitzo and some big news tonight for those of us that follow us on Facebook. And we have a new moderator there. So our new moderator, his name's Michael Drogmuller. He comes from a wealth of experience in severe weather event filming. He films for Channel 7 News and has filmed numerous tropical cyclone crossings in the northern Queensland region. So we welcome him on board. He's also, you may, some of you may know him from the most popular weather zone or weather forums in Australia, the weather zone forums. He's an admin there or a moderator there. So he will join us and bring a lot of experience, especially when things get very, very hectic towards the end of this month. And we'll explain why they're going to get hectic later this month as we are about to enter into a very active period of weather. So let's talk about that. Thanks to Weather Zone, not much happening here on the satellite imagery around Australia. We've got a nice little trough system in through here, producing a lot of shower and storm activity over northern Queensland and probably just the central parts of the Northern Territory. Pretty benign conditions for this time of year over the top end coast and pretty benign also for the Kimberley. And look, that's expected to continue for the Kimberley and the Western Australian region into next week. But for the Northern Territory, that's all about to change. This trough system that's currently you can see on your screen over Queensland is going to actually enhance, be enhanced. More moisture is going to flow into it. It is going to go off in terms of rainfall potential. Maybe not just yet. But next week, this thing will produce a lot of rain over parts of Queensland, particularly over southern Queensland and even coastal parts of Queensland here in south central Queensland. And eventually, what we're going to see is a return to monsoonal conditions in a couple of weeks' time over most of northern Australia. Now, that's the key there. Northern Australia, not just northwestern Australia. So for Queensland folks, this is Finally, a chance to see a wet season coming up as we head later into January. As we head towards the Solomon, very active. And look, the Solomon's region is expected to be very active now for a number of weeks. There is very, very clear signs on model data for the following, uh, for the long-term projections that this area will just continually go off. And when this area goes off, things start to happen, coral sea-wise. So this area will continue, continuously go off now for at least the next, uh, at least the next two to three weeks, possibly uh, even longer term, four to six weeks. Alrighty, alrighty. So let's look at rainfall tomorrow. Most of it will be confined over to northern inland Queensland, where we're going to see a general shower and storm activity. Also, the central and to northern parts of the Northern Territory, still missing that northwest, that Darwin region, not expected to see much tomorrow, but anywhere east of that, uh, you're going to see a fair bit of shower and storm activity too. The Kimberley, still reasonably isolated activity there tomorrow. As we head to Sunday, we're continuing to see that area of enhanced shower and storm activity now spreading into southern parts of Queensland. Also, the Kimberley region starting to see more general shower and storm activity, and finally, the Darwin area getting back into uh, shower and storm activity of the afternoon afternoon. As we head towards Monday, that activity starts to progress further to the north and starts to in be enhanced over the northeastern parts of the Territory. Also, the peninsula region and northern inland Queensland really starting to go off on Monday in terms of shower and storm activity, and that moisture spreading southwards all the way through to southeast Queensland on the Monday. And as we head to Tuesday, things ease up a little bit for northern Queensland. We still have some uh, good shower and storm activity over the far north and also the top end coast. Kimberley region getting some dry air into that region or some dry air advection in that region. So we're going to see conditions really ease up there. Only the very, very isolated uh, shower and storm chance in that area. So over Queensland, though, we continue to see this trough system being active, providing heaps of shower and storm activity. That moisture spreading southwards as well. So we're going to see uh, a lot of that activity making it further south. That's not really the interesting four days. The next four days is much more interesting. It's towards the back end of this period, the next four, the four to eight day period, so basically in a week's time, it's around about this time of the month that things just start to get a little bit interesting. And I'll go through why they're getting interesting shortly. But basically we're going to start to see a lot more shower activity making it onto the coastline later in the week, next week. We're also going to see a lot more shower and storm activity spreading a lot further west and there's even the chance of some very, very heavy or moderate to heavy falls over this part of the region or this part of Queensland which hasn't seen much rainfall at all. 
Once again, the northwest is going to see a very, very dry period at the moment uh, and for the next week. And that's pretty clear on almost every single global model that that's going to happen. The top end of the territory will start to become more active towards the end of next week as well as we start to see a low pressure region develop in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So generally over the next week we're going to see fairly general falls here of 50 to 100 millimetres over the top end, 50 to 100 millimetres over the peninsula, grading to 15 to 25 mils over most parts of inland Queensland. So still looking at some fairly decent rainfall uh, considering that this area has missed out primarily, particularly this region where my cursor is there. Also the Kimberley Coast, uh, they're going to see some shower and storm activity although there is going to be a clearance in the four to eight day period so um, take these for titles with a bit of a uh, grain of salt. After this period though, that's when things get interesting so let's take a look at why that might be happening. Alright, this is currently the surface level wind pattern over Southeast Asia and the reason we look at this, once again for those of you that haven't been following us for very long, we always look to what's happening to Asia because it's a very clear sign of what will happen in Australia in uh, about five to seven days after it all happens in Asia. So, in Asia right now we have a fairly uh, weak pressure pattern over the over the South China Sea, so not much in the way of a northeasterly trade flow. Now let's have a look at how this changes in say seven days time. So the next the next image you're going to see is what's happening in Southeast Asia in eight days or seven days time. Now you can see through the South China Sea we've got this area of gale force winds, gale force northeasterly winds brought about by a very uh, strong high pressure system developing over northern China and Russia. Now that high pressure system uh, is going to create these really strong northeast winds. Now what happens to those northeast winds once they cross the equator they become a northwesterly monsoon. Now that northwesterly monsoon, that surge between when these are northeasterly trade winds to when we see a corresponding increase in our northwest monsoon generally takes about three to five days between uh, when they get that surge and when that surge starts to impact the, uh, the, southern, uh, the, the southern hemisphere monsoon. So by that, by that thinking, by around about the 10 to 12 day time frame, we are going to see a key and marked increase and intensification of our monsoon trough. At this stage, both the GFS, the EC and even the Access G model are predicting this increase in trade wind flow over the, over the South China Sea. So, correspondingly, we will see a big increase in the northwest monsoon flow and we will see at this stage an area in this particular region here that is likely to form into a low pressure system. That area is likely to move in a westerly direction out towards the Northern Territory WA border. Now there is still the chance that this low that may form here if the monsoon surge is strong enough there is still a chance that the low that might form here may turn into a tropical cyclone before making landfall as it pushes to the west. The more likely scenario at this stage is that the low will push westwards and reform in this area here a few days later. So we're talking around about mid-January now where we're expecting that low to cross the Northern Territory and then push into the uh, Kimberley, Kimberley region and possibly off the coast of the Kimberley region and form into a tropical low, uh, a decent tropical low or tropical cyclone uh, off the Kimberley coast around mid-January. Now it's not set in stone, don't get me wrong, it's not set in stone but there is a very very high, uh, uh, not very very high but let's say about a 60 plus percent chance of what I just mentioned actually happening. So there is a very, it's, it's a high percentage chance based on the fact that we're looking at this far out, there is a lot of model agreement on this particular thing happening. So if we take a look at the surface level pressures in East Asia in say 10 days time for instance, we see that the highs aren't exactly extremely strong, but they're strong enough and they're south enough to create that surge of northeasterly trade winds. So you can see here we're getting pressures of about 1,040. You should be able to see those numbers on your screen there. 1,040. That's not a very strong high for Asia by Asian standards, but it's pretty. What makes it so important for our monsoon is the fact that that higher, higher level pressure 
is a little bit further to the south than it normally would nor would be. So we would normally see those pressures maybe 1,050, even up 1,060, but they'd be up here, well to the north. So because they're so far south, they're creating a bit of a squeeze between the the high pressure region here, the monsoon trough in in the uh, north in the southern hemisphere, and also what we're seeing in Australian longitudes around that same Australian latitudes at that same time. Let's have a look at Australia in about 10 days. We see some pretty decent high pressure over the Australian region. So what you've got is you've got a push from the Australian region of these southeasterly trade winds. You've got a push from the northern hemisphere of those northwesterly winds. And so what we see is we see an enhanced area of convergence, which which is what we call the monsoon trough. But it's going to be active because we've got two fairly strongish high pressure regions pushing up against that monsoon trough. So we're going to see enhanced convergence along that trough line. So that's why we've got a very high confidence of something forming in here uh, where those where those southeast trade winds meet those northwest monsoonal winds uh, around about uh, sort of 10 to 15 days time. And basically now we're looking at the end result and the end result on say the 18th of January at this stage by the uh, GEFS which is the Ensemble GFS and also by the European which we aren't allowed to show you. European is a, a fair bit more accurate than the GFS when it comes to this stuff and it shows a very similar scenario so that's why I'm showing you this map. So we can see there that by the 18th the uh, GFS model or the GFS Ensemble has a tropical lower cyclone located off the Pilbara coastline uh, around about the 18th of January. Now whether or not that actually hits the coast we can't tell you yet because there's no clear guidance on that. But what we can say is there's a fairly high degree of confidence that this system will form. How strong? No one knows. Where it's going to go? No one knows. Initially what we can say is that at that point in time, or particularly between sort of the uh, t the 10th to the 15th of January, Australia does look like it's going to be under the influence of some fairly uh, fairly strong mid-level ridging over the central parts of Australia. And so, what we what we can say is that anything that does form in this area will initially be pushed out to the west. Okay, and that's what I mentioned when this slow finally forms in about uh, seven to ten days' time. We expect it to move in a westerly direction. We don't expect it to move southeast. Now. This leads us into the second area of interest. And the second area of interest is in the Northern Coral Sea. Sorry, before I, once again, I always get ahead of myself, especially when we start talking Queensland. Um, before I do go to Queensland, we do, I just want to show you that there is a little bit of uh, doubt as to where this low is going to be by about the 13th in about 10 days time. We have a potential area of low pressure all through this Gulf Country region and into NT. But we've also got some model indications that by day 10, we're actually going to see a tropical lower cyclone quickly form west of the Kimberley Coast. So at this stage, there is a little bit of disagreement and, and uh, a little bit of variability in the guidance as to where the low is going to be located in 10 days' time. We would probably favour a Northern Territory solution and then we expect that system to push in a westerly direction and p could possibly form out here. But maybe be a little, uh, a little intent on bringing it out to the west too quickly, the European model, but we'll see how that trend continues over the next couple of days. At this stage, we expect it to form in the Gulf of Carpentaria, in the western Gulf of Carpentaria, push west and uh, possibly reform into, or probably reform into a TC or low off the Kimberley coast uh, in that 10 to 15 day time frame. You can see that the 10-day Access G model, which is the Bureau of Meteorology's Australian model uh, that looks at the global uh, that looks at global conditions, has the low here in the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory and pushing in a westerly direction at that point in time. At the, that model also predicting predicting a low or tropical cyclone to form well out here, not going to move anywhere towards WA. So if that happens, it's going to push harmlessly out here. But Christmas and Cocos Island will let you know if that if that starts to become more of a reality. The other thing we're starting to see is a clear signal on most model guidance that something will form in the Northern Coral Sea in the extended period. So this is after the Gulf of Carpentaria low uh, pushes west towards the Kimberley. As that happens, we are seeing a clear, more clear model guidance that something may form here in the Northern Coral Sea. Now the 
short the long term GFS model has been predicting this tropical low type uh, type disturbance to develop in the northern coral sea for a number of days now it's actually had it in its long term projections and so has the GEFS which is the ensemble version of what I'm showing you but basically we see that that high pressure ridge over Australia continues and we see a tropical low or cyclone developing in the northern coral sea pushing west towards the coast at that stage now bearing in mind we're talking the we're talking out to almost 15 days here possibly longer depending on which model you want to believe as to as to the one that is got this right so we do need to watch this particular area for development later on in the month so once the Gulf of Carpentaria Northern Territory thing pushes west uh, and does what it's going to do this area up here in the Northern Coral Sea does look like it's going to have some favorable conditions at this stage it looks like it's going to be under some upper level ridging once again it is a long way ahead so we do be caution you in uh, in these predictions or in these in these outlooks that it, they're not necessarily anywhere near 100% accurate but we are going to see that active monsoon trough over the region and we're going to see uh, at this stage there's some signaling it's not as clear as the WA one so we definitely haven't got as much certainty in this particular scenario occurring but we are seeing some guidance that is suggesting that towards the end of that week maybe Friday the 17th of January is a bit early but maybe more the Sunday Monday Tuesday of the next week as we head into the 20th and just after of January that's when we're starting to look at this area here firing up now whether it forms into a cyclone or not we can't say but at that point in time uh, the guidance suggests that uh, whatever happens up here is likely to move in a westerly direction but as it's so so far ahead that we can't really say that with any certainty what we can say is there is signaling now in both the European which we are not allowed to show you and the GFS model which we are allowed to show you that suggests that there will be something developing out here I've got to, I've got to be careful in saying will there may be something developing out here so as we head out to the extreme long term we still see that Pilbara system out here off the Pilbara coastline but we also see the uh, the GEFS ensemble and also to a, a certain extent the European ensemble suggesting that something could be located off the North Tropical Coast or Peninsula at that point in time and the European is not as clear on this as the GEFS but it is starting to suggest that something will happen here in the North Coral Sea in that 15 day time frame so as we as I said we're getting into the 20th of, of, of January 19th to sort of the 22nd 23rd of January by that stage the Gulf of Carpentaria system slash NT slash WA system is likely to happen before this happens but uh, they may there may be a situation where they might coexist it's too early to say what we can say is that the tropics are going to hot up and they're going to hot up big time as we head towards ja later January so looking at cyclones and rain over the next few weeks uh, at this stage once again if we haven't stressed that enough we'll stress it again late next week we're expecting to see a tropical low developing in that area pushing in a westerly direction so that's pretty uh, once again it's pretty clear it's just a matter of when it happens but there is also that opportunity for the low to not form there initially and form straight off the North Kimberley coastline initially at this stage uh, we're tipping this scenario to, to occur rather than the other scenario which has the load automatically developing there now the week after the week after we expect a tropical low or cyclone to be located in that area and we expect it to be pushing in a southwest direction at this stage once again later in that week we expect the northern coral sea to potentially see something forming now that Solomon Islands area is going to be continuously going off with convection so it's only a matter of time before one of those storm clusters starts to uh, show some type of uh, some type of organization and we ex we we are starting to see signaling on model data that suggests that that organization may start to happen late in the week of the, no the week ending 19th of January once again it's not till the week after though that we see that that low at this stage looking like moving in a westerly direction and being located in that area the week after there is also some signs that the Fijian area will start to go off towards the end of January as well now in terms of rainfall we are looking at the 
whole of northern Australia starting to come under the influence of the monsoon, especially if these lows and cyclones actually form. We're going to see that monsoon trough drift southwards. We're going to see, particularly if that northeast surge of monsoonal winds in the northern hemisphere manages to push its way down south, we will see that monsoon trough finally make an appearance in Australia and the real monsoon trough, not the uh, little quasi monsoon trough that we had in November. The real monsoon trough should make an appearance over northern Australia. So next week, very dry over northwestern uh, northwestern Australia, but very wet over the top end, um, uh, very, uh, the right, the extreme coastal parts of the top end, I should say, and then progressively getting wetter and wetter across Australia as January progresses. So once again, if that low pushes west across Northern Territory in a week or two's time, we're going to see that entire area getting, go, getting under the influence of some very heavy rain. If that low in the Northern Coral Sea pushes west, we're going to see uh, very, very heavy rain over most of northern and far northern Queensland as well. So, look folks, long term, finally we're starting to see some good news after a very dry December and a very dry first half of January. We're going to start to see some excellent news in terms of rainfall, hopefully, uh, with these low pressure systems forming. Thanks for watching tonight. Hopefully things will start to get a little bit more interesting as we head into next week. Good night.